guys, so today is going to be another BLB Bible study video and I just want to apologize saying that I did not mean for this to not be consistent, but my life has been, my life has been pretty crazy. Anyway, for today's video we're going to be just talking about kind of what's been on my heart and like what I've been thinking about over the past couple weeks and that's, that is um, being too busy for God. And the reality is, is that God stands outside of time and he is not limited to this like 24 hour period of time that we have. And while we in our small little human minds can only handle 24 hours at a time, God sees the beginning, the end, and everything in between. And he's not limited and restricted by time. So when we get stressed out that we have so much to do or there's a lot going on in this small little amount of time, when we're focusing on things that are temporal and are not eternal and while we have to do that sometimes with work and stuff like that and like jobs and school it's important to remember what is of the utmost importance and I've kind of talked about that before and having an eternal mindset to where we're not focused on so focused on things that are earthly and stuff like that and so we can put the most important thing which is spending time with the Lord I don't know about you guys but I definitely can put that on the lower priority list of things to do when I have a lot going on and I am focusing on like I have to get all this stuff done and the reality is is that when you try to accomplish things out of your own strength I don't know if you've noticed but oh I've noticed that you get angry you get impatient you get you're quick to being like snappy and you are acting not out of the spirit at all. You're acting out of the flesh. And so when we do not act out of fleshly desires and like quick to anger and all this other stuff that we can tend to fall back into whenever we get too busy. Um, I read something that says if you, the devil will try to distract you with the non-essentials in your life and keep you busy as possible so that you don't have time to spend time with the Lord and that you're so distracted by all these other voices in the world that you can't hear the still small voice of God. It said overstimulate their mind so that they can't hear the still small voice of the Lord and that is honestly like it's scary and heartbreaking to me because we do that with everything with social media with Twitter with Instagram with magazines with things that are just so like we're just feeding our minds garbage all the time and that's why um, I mentioned in a video before on my main channel that you should clean out your social media clean out going on tumblr unfollow people that are putting garbage into your feed and if you want to go on tumblr if you want there's nothing wrong with that because if you say that there is and that's just being legalistic when you place anything above spending time with God that's becoming an idol in your life. I think we can develop idols unknowingly. Unknowingly that we are slaving away to work and emails and everything like that and we don't even realize that it's all consuming us and then we look back and we're like whoa why do I feel weird? Why am I having anxiety? Why am I freaking out? Why am I doing all this? And it's like oh because I haven't read my Bible in a week. If you want to be spiritually strong wake up and read the word wake up read your devotional get a scripture in. go on your Bible app and read your the little scripture that comes up every single day and then listen to worship music in your car and be filling your mind with things that are of spiritual importance it's easy to wake up and get in the routine of things and then you're like oh one of my favorite passages in the Bible comes from Psalm 24 and I'm gonna read it to you it says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all its people belong to him for he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean's depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty? the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the King of glory. I love this passage when life gets crazy because I love, love, love that it says right in the beginning, in the very opening verse, says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And right then, it makes me reevaluate everything and I'm like, okay, this is God's earth. I am God's. What I'm doing is God's. My money is God's. What I'm working for is God's. What, who I'm talking to. You know, like we don't own anything and, and it gives me 
um, a peace because it reminds me that I don't have control over anything. And whenever my life gets too busy, I tend to like, I want to write everything down, I need to get everything done, and I have like this one track mind where I'm like, I have to do this, and I get so like, oh my gosh, like I get anxiety and I freak out, and then when things don't go according to plan, I'm like, oh, what's happening? And and then I read this and and it fills me with peace because it reminds me that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And then it said the world and all its people belong to him. And I know that you guys know that I love the beach and I love the ocean and I love everything about the sea and everything like that. And I love that it says he laid the earth's foundation, the earth that he controls, that he owns, that everything in it is his. And he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean's depths. And then when I take a step back. I literally, I know that this is not gonna be for everyone, and I know like geographically it's not gonna be for everyone, but whenever I go to the beach, whenever I'm in creation, I feel at peace. God's glory is revealed through his creation, and when you're out in creation, there is this peace that surpasses all understanding, and, and looking at the waves, looking at the sand, and holding sand, and thinking that his thoughts towards me outnumber the grain of sand and that his thoughts are so precious towards me and that he loves me and that everything in it is his and the waves are controlled by him. Nothing is outside of God. And when I read this, it gives me, it literally gives me an out of this world comfort when I read this passage of scripture. And then it says, who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. And, and as I talked about, we can have these idols that come into our life without us even realizing it. We become slaves to things that are everyday normal things like social media and work and job and money and all this other stuff. And then we're like, oh, why am I freaking out? Why am I having these bad thoughts about myself or towards other? Why am I not being patient? Why am I getting angry? You know, why, 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 why? And it's because we haven't even realized that we've created idols in our life that we didn't even know about. There's another verse of scripture that says, um, test my heart, Lord, you know, examine my ways and, and basically show me the wicked parts of my heart that I haven't taken to the cross yet. And we need to do that. We need to ask God to analyze our hearts. As followers of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit and we have that, you know, inside of you that when I am quick to anger or when I am allowing things to control my life that should not be controlling it, I have this little voice in my head that says, Cambria, what are you doing? Why aren't you spending time with me? You know, why are you placing this as more important as me? That's not gonna bring you fulfillment. And that's why we need to make sure every single day that we have an eternity mindset. You know, I like to think like if today, if today the Lord were to come back, would I be ready for him? Would I be studying his word? Would I be walking in the spirit? Or would I be doing things that I want to do? And would I be acting out of fleshly desires and things like that. We don't have a life-size salvation. We have an eternity-sized salvation. And I don't want a life-size salvation. I want an eternity-sized salvation. So we should have an eternal mindset. And I want to challenge you guys, do you have an eternal mindset? And if you don't, then why not? And get one. Wake up every morning with the intent of knowing more of the Lord than you did yesterday. And discovering his word. His word is never, it never grows old. It's never boring. It's always, it's living and active and it's new and it's exciting and it's fresh every single day. And that's the beauty of God's word is that it's never dull or boring or dry. It, it fills you up. It fills your spirit up. It, it quenches your spiritual thirst. And we need that every single day. Think about when you don't eat for a few hours. You're like, I'm so hungry. You can't think. You get angry. Your head hurts. We need God's word like we need food. It needs to literally fill us up and satiate our souls so that we can have the energy to serve him and to glorify him in everything that we do and to walk in the spirit. So the verse of this week is actually going to be found in Psalm 46. It's verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. That's going to be the verse of the week. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to share verses or anything like that, you can hashtag BLB Bible study. And I love you guys. I'm praying for all of you. And just know that you are so loved far more than you could ever imagine. Loved so much that God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and atone and 
say, I take on all of your sins, I take on all of your baggage, everything that you've done wrong, I have cleansed you, you are pure, you're not a failure and you're not a screw up, you are my kid who I love, who I died for, who I literally love to death, and I love you with an everlasting love so much that I want you to have eternal life and all you have to do is accept that I sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord that you will be saved. You'll receive an abundance of peace and joy and love like you've never experienced before and you will have eternal life. You will experience the fullness of Jesus Christ that nothing else in this world can give you. I hope that you all have a really blessed week and that you can have your priorities um, straight and that you can have your mind set on things above and not on things below where moth and rust destroy and where thieves come in and break and steal but that you can store up your treasures in heaven where our Heavenly Father saves them. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!